Good afternoon, everybody. Hope everyone's doing well as you join us on this Friday afternoon. The rain has stopped here in mid-Michigan, so I hope it's dry for you all too. Max, I just wanna make sure you are back with us. There you are. Great. Here I am. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, I didn't want to start it if you were running to get a water or coffee or something. So <laughs> um, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm Kathy Lancaster with the Library of Michigan, and I am stepping in for my colleague Heather here today. But um, we are very excited to have Git set up here with us. Um, it's an online learning and discovery platform. And the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services has been partnering with Git set up since what, fall of, of 2020, I believe. Um, and through MDHHS has been this great opportunity for libraries across Michigan to also be um, collaborating with Git set up and, and sharing it with your communities. So we're very excited to have Max here. Um, and I'm going to pass it over to you, Max, to get us going. Excellent. Well, thanks so much, Kathy, for the introduction. Um, everyone, it's it's so nice to meet you all virtually. Uh, hopefully see some familiar faces. I know it's been a little bit since we've done a, a Library of Michigan Get Set Up orientation. So really excited to be here. Uh, my name is Max. I'm on our partnerships team here at Get Set Up. Um, really our goal is just to share a bit more about what Get Set Up is, uh, how your older adult patrons can ultimately benefit from this resource, uh, and how to navigate the platform as well. We'll get into a bit of that uh, important navigation. That way you are familiar with the interface and kind of how it works. So if you happen to be already familiar with Get Set Up, uh, hopefully, you know, you can learn something new here today as well. But really just wanted to start things off with an introduction and and a bit of background for you about how Get Set Up really came to be. And it all began just over three years ago. So both of our co-founders, uh, they really went out on a mission to create an online community that's exclusively for older adults, but built on lifelong learning, uh, socialization, and connecting with others. So our co-founder, Neil D'Souza, one of our two co-founders, he really comes from a background uh, in education and technology. Our other co-founder, uh, Lawrence, he comes from a background of partnerships and business development. And a little bit of background on Lawrence, his father founded uh, a nonprofit assisted living facility. So he spent a, a really good portion of his life uh, around his father in this environment. So both Lawrence and Neil, they came together and they understand that learning uh, and interacting with others, it doesn't just stop when you know you reach a certain age. But what they didn't know in beginning get set up three years ago is that the timing really would align almost perfectly with the onset of the pandemic. So as we know, the pandemic really changed kind of the way everyone interacts and, and bridging the digital divide that became more important, really perhaps more than than it had ever been. So we were all thrust into this a virtual environment where we're learning through Zoom, talking with folks through our computers, our tablets, our cell phones. So staying connected that way was really at the forefront. And then the other thing that came out of the pandemic was that social isolation became really one of the main challenges faced by many, especially older adults uh, who were you know, ultimately less connected and they tend to be a little bit less technologically savvy. So Get Set Up was born is this platform to not only bridge the digital divide uh, and learn technology, but evolve into a, a virtual environment where older adults could interact with others uh, with the ultimate goal of, of enabling them to live healthier, uh, happier, and, and really more connected lives. So now what, what really is Get Set Up? That's just a little bit of, of the history and background um, and, and how we got to where we are. But Really, as the platform has evolved over the course of this three years, continuing to think about you know how we can be the most suitable place for older adults, that's really been the most important. So this idea of creating a suitable learning environment for older adults means we have to really do our best to ensure the platform 
is user friendly. Uh, and we really want to remove that friction that, you know, some folks may face when trying to learn something new online, because, you know, let's face it, technology is, it's pretty challenging for most individuals uh, and those who are unfamiliar with it, uh, it could be really intimidating. So with Get Set Up, uh, we developed uh, a space that's really inviting, uh, a website that we hope is easy to navigate and that we're continuing to learn from our community about uh, how we can improve it. Um, easy to join classes, and most importantly, uh, more than just a place to take these classes, but a space where learners can feel uh, really comfortable, uh, where they can feel empowered to return to get set up and continue learning and, and making friends and connections and feel that sense of community. So did want to note here at the bottom that we host classes in four different languages. Uh, English is the primary. Uh, we also have classes in Spanish, Hindi, and Mandarin as well. So really, as we continue to grow as a platform, we'll, we'll look to expand upon these languages that we offer classes in. But for now, those are the core four languages. So now just uh, as we talk about technology a bit more and, and how we strive on Get Set Up to make the platform user-friendly, uh, we have what's called the lounge. Uh, some of you may be familiar with the lounge if you've you've checked out Get Set Up classes before and familiarize yourself, but this is the first thing that an individual sees when they enter a Get Set Up class. So when it comes to joining a session on the platform, there's really a few different options uh, and ways of participating. So for live classes, you can enter the class by clicking that orange join Zoom button on the top right-hand side of the lounge. Uh, this will launch Zoom and it'll take you into what we refer to as the live studio. So this is where learners can actively participate. They can unmute themselves and speak and ask questions. Uh, and they can also attend the class by viewing just from the lounge as well, which is this visual here of this exercise class that we're, we're taking a look at. So we really introduced the lounge because some learners know you know, they don't immediately feel comfortable joining a live class. Uh, maybe they don't want to turn their camera on. They don't really quite know what, what Zoom is uh, and they're confused by it. Or, or maybe they're just eating lunch because it's lunchtime and, and they want to watch a class at the same time. So that may be, you know, reasons why they want to interact in this way. And that's why the lounge is perfect for that. So something to note, though, the lounge is it's grown into more of just this uh you know, passive viewing experience and learners are able to interact in really a few different ways. So they can message their peers and chat on the right hand side uh, using that chat feature. They can ask the instructor a question directly that they have in the chat as well. And we have a teacher assistant who's in there fielding questions to ask the instructor. And then also while they're viewing this class in the lounge, they can explore other classes uh, by clicking to, you know, check out and see what they'd like to take maybe later in the day, later in that week, uh, based upon their interests. So there's more than just one way to interact when you're watching a class on Get Set Up. And now just a bit more about our, our learner community. So just so you have a little bit of context, really our, our age range for our learners falls within 55 to 100 years of age. And when we think of our learners, it really boils down to, to four things. Uh, the first one being uh, Get Set Up learners, they want to stay active. Uh, so this may be, you know, physically, mentally, maybe they have a desire to, you know, keep their mind sharp and, and learn about a new topic that they've always wanted to, but they're not really sure how to gain that knowledge. Uh, the second, they're in search of, of ultimately validation uh, and being acknowledged and and recognized for, for what they bring to the table. They wanna showcase uh, their skills uh, and, and kind of what they've learned. The third is connection. Uh, connection and community are very important and, and our learners are ultimately looking to, to maintain that. So they wanna make connections and meet new friends, uh, not just sit in a classroom, but interact and meet others who may live in Michigan in their same town or elsewhere uh, across the country as well. And then the fourth one, lastly, is maintaining really as much independence as they're able to as they continue to age is top of mind. So learning technology enables them to do just this. That way they can go on to 
you know, acquire more skills uh, and be more self-sufficient at an older age. And on the flip side here is our creator. So talking a little bit about our learner audience, uh, the older adults that you serve in Michigan through your library. But on the flip side, uh, our creators on Get Set Up are those who teach the classes. So these creators, they fall into three different buckets. Uh, the first one being our guide instructors. So these are retired professionals, um, ex-teachers, or they come from a background in education uh, and they're very passionate about what they do and they want to take their knowledge and share it on Get Set Up. Uh, the second one are our community members. So something that we do is, is welcome our entire learner community to not only share their ideas about what they want to learn, but also volunteer to host a session on a topic, um, maybe something they like, maybe they did teach before, but for anyone wishing to do this, our team can point them in the right direction and, and tell them how to get started on that front. The third bucket of creators, um, this one really can be special guests, uh, one-time guest speakers. Um, sometimes we have special events that we host on, on Get Set Up as well. Um, so when we think of these three, our guides, uh, our community members, and, and special guests on occasion, they really all give us the ability to offer lots of different engaging classes on, on so many different topics. So now when we think about classes, just wanted to give a bit more insight into just the different types uh, that can be found on Get Set Up. And, and really some of these top categories that make up our core catalog, um, they're all listed here. So I just wanted to give you a highlight into kind of what some of these are. As, as learners get familiar with their device, um, you know, they're more comfortable with using technology. Maybe they've taken a new member orientation to the site. They can go ahead and get signed up for really a variety of topics. So just wanted to highlight a few here. Um, first, I'll call out business and entrepreneurship. So whether individuals want to brush up on skills as they, you know, maybe re-enter the workforce, uh, maybe they're interested in and starting their own business, or they just want to learn about digital tools to make them more productive and keep up with the latest technology. So these classes are available to support them with that. Switching gears, um, on the whole other spectrum, we have cooking and food and nutrition. So food and nutrition, these really hone in on uh, healthy eating, uh, cooking as well. So maybe it's meal planning ideas, maybe it's uh, recipes with certain foods or ingredients. Uh, we have kitchen and food safety, uh, exploring blue zones. So places on earth where people regularly live to over a hundred years of age uh, and, and best practices for diet and nutrition with that in mind. So lots in cooking and food and nutrition. Another popular one I wanted to exercise here is highlight here is exercise. So in addition to, you know, cooking, business and entrepreneurship, exercise is probably one of the most popular classes on Get Set Up. And really when you think of it, many times people think it's moderate to high intensity, but our fitness class catalog, it, it really does a good job of including a variety of levels. Uh, some are modified in case someone's movement is limited, such as uh, chair yoga, seated strength training, uh, we have different Tai Chi sessions. So that's just some examples of, of what's in here. And then lastly, travel is another popular one. So I wanted to highlight this because travel, it really focuses on certain destinations, um, tips when traveling. You know, these are really great because not everyone has the opportunity or the ability to see a certain destination. So we have virtual tours that highlight certain locations. Um, so these are very informative and and an easy way to learn more or hear about others' experience who's who've maybe been to a certain location and, and can teach others as well. And now I just wanted to share a, a bit more about how we organize classes on Get Set Up. So that previously I showed you by category, and we also organize by series. And series, these are really geared to make it much easier uh, to find a certain type of class. Maybe it's a travel destination, like I was discussing, um, food for a certain diet. These are especially helpful as we introduce different seasonal programming to on Get Set Up. So maybe it's the cooking recipe classes for 
spring, heading into summer, or uh, gearing up for the holidays with holiday baking. So instead of a learner having to search for this class to see if it's offered on Get Set Up, they can simply find all similar classes in one class series. And just some examples here on this slide so you can see how we organize them, what some of these training topics are, um, including marketing your business, volunteering, um, stress awareness, depending on a particular observance for the month, the list does go on. And speaking of some of those classes, just wanted to tie it back and, and give you a glimpse into what the top ones are amongst Michiganders. So these classes here are the 10 most popular cumulatively over the course of our three-year partnership with the state of Michigan. So as you can see, there's, there's quite a good mix. You can see that really the vast majority of these are exercise classes. Uh, and this has been a pretty consistent trend for Michiganders throughout our entire partnership. So it's great to see that they love to stay active. Um, but as we head into the holiday season and, and enter the new year, we're always keeping our eye on, on this selection of top classes just to see if it fluctuates, uh, see what's trending. And, and we never know, something may rise to the top like Recycled Crafts is currently right now. Now I wanted to jump in just to some readily available resources uh, that you can access. Some of you may be familiar with this, and if you're not, I uh, wanted to give you a, just a, a brief overview of, of what this entails. So what we've done is collaborated with our marketing team at Get Set Up to put together various materials that are accessible in a single toolkit format. Um, and the format's a digital flipbook. So you just need the URL to access this. Um, and once you have that access, you can go through the toolkit, access, download, and utilize the different materials that are within it. So just wanted to highlight kind of the collection of resources that you can expect to find in this toolkit. Uh, the first being Michigan Learner Stories. So we've had a handful of Michiganders who have shared their experiences using Get Set Up that are now published stories on our website uh, for our entire community to access and to share and distribute. We also have our monthly programming calendar. So each month, this is very helpful. So you can see what featured classes Get Set Up is offering, uh, how these may tie into uh, an upcoming holiday or observance for that particular month. Just wanted to highlight November. We've recently shared a session dedicated to commemorating veterans this past week, uh, as it was Veterans Day. Uh, we're really now starting to kick off the holiday season with healthy Thanksgiving recipe classes, um, different ones that folks can try out. Uh, in addition to this, November uh, is also National Diabetes Month, so we also have classes centered around uh, diabetes management, um, food in that series as well. And we'll also have reoccurring sessions on preventing frauds and scams as, as Fraud Prevention Week does fall within November too. So it's a very action-packed month, and that's just a sample of, of what we do from month to month to cater the programming to, to really align with the observance or, or holiday season. And then lastly, wanted to call out in the toolkit, most importantly, there are downloadable assets like Get Set Up logos, um, imagery that your library can utilize for social media promotion, uh, websites, uh, maybe it's print newsletters, maybe it's digital newsletters. We also have how-to guides that can be referenced that really give an overview of how to navigate the website, uh, book a Get Set Up class, and then also where learners can find our help resources as well. So something that, that we appreciate is feedback. Um, so if there are materials or resources when you're looking through this toolkit that you'd find helpful or you can't locate them, just let our team know. Uh, there's a good chance that we can work with them to get it developed uh, or point you in the right direction so, so you can really find what you're looking for and, and maximize your ability to share the resource with, with your patrons. So lastly here, I wanted to conclude with, uh, so it's just fresh in your mind, a, a brief overview on what the getting started process really entails on Get Set Up. So after learning about Get Set Up from your library, users can get started in, in a few simple steps. And, and that first step 
It's to visit the state of Michigan e-learning channel. And here is that e-learning channel URL down at the right hand side beneath the visual. That way you can check that out if you aren't familiar. And we could also drop it in the chat here for your quick reference. But once folks land here on this landing page that we're showcasing, the user will have the ability to log in if they already have an account or password and sign up to create an account. So I just wanted to go through that process briefly here with you and toggle over to <clears throat> the e-learning channel page. So as I was mentioning, if they're not logged in, they'll have the opportunity to go up to the right-hand side and sign up or log in. And this is what that experience looks like here. So uh, they'll be prompted to enter their name, email address, or they can sign up and create the account. So email, password creation, They'll then be prompted to select their age group. And then it's easy as selecting the orange button, sign up. Once they're signed up or logged in, this home page here of the e-learning channel is going to default to their home page. So folks can now start taking classes either on this e-learning channel itself, on various different categories and rows, or they can toggle over here to our class calendar, which really opens up the entire gamut of, of programming on Get Set Up. So as you can see here, uh, the calendar page has a few different ways that you can filter classes, find what you're looking for, whether it be by date over here, uh, category, or even guide instructor, because we have some learners on Get Set Up who really like certain classes by an instructor. And this is an easy way that you could sort and find just what they teach. The other thing I wanted to call out on this page is our help center. So up on the top hand right side here is get set up site is our help center. So this is information on, on really how to get in contact with our support team. Uh, our dedicated support team uh, is available through chat, uh, email, uh, and by phone. So that contact information is here on this page as well. Hey, Max. <clears throat> yeah. Hi, there's some, um, sorry, everyone. This is Michelle. I'm, I work with Max. I apologize. I'm a little bit sick today. There's some questions in the chat. I just want to reiterate for everyone. Maybe they joined a little bit later. This is a statewide program. So it's funded entirely by MDHHS and the entire uh, Library of Michigan. So all of your branches, even if you're not on this call, this is your branch as part of this program. So there's no additional charge. There's no need to go to a pricing page. That is for prospects. You are all part of the Michigan Partnership. I think what Max is showing you right now, where you see the MDHHS logo, <coughs> excuse me, um, isn't it, it doesn't exclude anyone that's part of a branch. Um, so just make sure that that's something that you all are aware of. There is no additional fee. This is a really wonderful service. And part of the reason that we're hosting this session with Max today is to make sure that you all know um, that our contract with the Michigan um, library system really added additional quote unquote seats to the partnership, allowing more because we know that there are many of you that are in parts of the state that are, you know, in the UP, your, some branches are very rural, some are, you know, in highly populated areas, it doesn't matter. As long as there is a seat available and there's plenty of seats available, that that's what the, the purpose of this is for. The other thing really quick, Max, um, and maybe you showed this, but this keeps coming up in the chat is the difference between a live and uh, an encore class. So I know you were on that calendar page. Would you mind just showing them that, the purple icon really quick? Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Let's toggle back to the calendar page. So here you can see Friday. So this is what classes are taking place today. Um, and you could see here, I'll zoom in a little bit because it's a little difficult to see, but uh, not only can you see what classes are new with this green new badge here, um, but you can also see what's live. So we denote the live classes by the purple video icon. Anything else um, is an encore class. So it's a guided replay of a session that we've hosted live previously. The only difference is you can't enter Zoom for the class, but you can interact um, 
in the lounge as I was talking about the difference between the lounge and, and entering the Zoom in a live class. So I just wanted to go back here and reiterate that within the uh, Get Set Up Toolkit that I reviewed just prior to this, this site navigation portion, uh, your teams have access to that material. So it does include a how-to guide um, that really recaps that login, sign up process, um, that step-by-step -step instruction for booking an actual class, and also where you can find the Get Set Up help resources that, that you can always revisit for, for clarification on the process. And our team's always standing by as well to help point you in that right direction. Or if you get any questions from individuals who are confused and are contacting you instead of uh, get set up support. So just so you know, those resources are, are open to you to access. And if you can't locate them, uh, let us know and we could absolutely share them. But Kathy, that wraps up that portion. I uh, wanted to leave plenty of time for questions. So I know you and Michelle were, were looking in the chat, but happy for anyone to unmute themselves as well. Uh, we could take any questions. All right. Thank you, Max. So we had a lot of, we did have a lot of questions about pricing and whatnot. So I hope that um, that is very clear that this is all free to libraries across Michigan um, and that, you know, you are the ones that we are hoping can help promote and encourage your patrons to attend these um, from their home or even making space available um, at your at your library and maybe um, getting some more engagement uh, from from citizens in, in your community that way. Um, so we have a few additional questions in the chat here now. And folks, you're also welcome to unmute and turn on your cameras um, uh, for a little conversation here with Max and Michelle. But um, is this available as an app for iPhone or Android is one of the questions. So we do have an Android app, Karen. Thanks for that question. Uh, as far as iOS, uh, Michelle, I know there's an iOS app in development. Can you confirm whether or not that is still in progress or it is final? Uh, no, it's it's if if we have that, it'll come out sometime in 2024. So it is available. So while there's no app on iPhone, you can attend classes on the iPhone. We actually we have actually we have a Michigander who was volunteering his time and hosting a Saturday conversational Spanish class from an old Kindle. So what we try to do from a technology standpoint is, you know, kind of account for the least common denominator to the most recent versions, but the iOS app will be something that will happen potentially in 2024. Good question, Karen. Yes, the Android app, but the mobile experience, of course, as you can imagine, it's a bit smaller of a screen to, to view get set up classes, but that way of participation is still available. Um, another question is uh, for the login. Um, do they, well, can they use an email instead of a phone number? Is there? They can. So when signing up, um, I'll pull that up real quick. That's it looks like, yeah, yeah, you can select one of the dots. I'm looking right now. <laughs> Absolutely. Right no, let's it. That. Yep. <laughs> That's a great question. So there is the option to sign up with phone number um, if, if they so choose, but do you recommend email address? That way they can opt in to receive Get Set Up updates uh, and class booking confirmations. That way they are receiving those communications and, and they know when to enter a class when they receive reminders. So there is the alternative for phone number to answer the question. Awesome. All right. Um, I had a, someone message me um, about, you know, where can we find this link or where can we put it? And so this is not a link that we share on the Michigan e-library. It's not up on Mel. However, you can link it um, to your website um, at your library. So you are encouraged to put it directly on your website. Um, and of course you have the whole toolkit there, um, in the chat, make sure you check that out. And then another question we have is for the 
old recordings, do you have to wait until they're scheduled or can you find them elsewhere um, unscheduled? That's a great question, Mary. So uh, right beneath the featured classes section, this is the e-learning channel homepage. Um, I was showing calendar where there are classes scheduled out at a particular time. We do have an on-demand offering. So this is the trending row on the homepage. So this is if folks don't want to wait for a recording to air at a particular time. They can go here and we have a selection of our classes that are on demand so they can watch it anytime that they please uh, and they could toggle to see if there's one of interest. Great. I'm just double checking past questions. I think um, most of those have been quite answered before we move on. Um, Yeah, I think we've got all the questions so far. What else do folks have? Uh, there's a couple questions in here. And actually, I'm I'm not typing as fast as what the thought's coming in my brain. So <laughs> I, Ashley, and I apologize, it could just be that I'm sick. Uh, but Ashley had add, asked a question about needing an account to set up as a library. You really don't. Um, but I just started writing part of this presentation um, doesn't include a brand new offering that we have with Get Set Up. It's called Get Set Up Anywhere. Um, and that does allow a sampling of about 50 of our classes to, that are curated that can be embedded directly onto your branch website. It's a very uh, simple line of code that our product and engineering teams have developed. So in essence, there's two things that are available. And again, this is a brand new product feature. We launched it with a couple of our partners um, earlier this fall. Um, we have talked to Heather about this with the e-library. The e-library is not able to do it at this time. But if any of you out there are interested in learning more about this um, as part of the leave behind what Max can do is just kind of include a couple points about this and we can certainly set up time separately. It's not a requirement at all. It's a it's really exciting. It's a brand new benefit that just really allows your patrons to kind of get a sneak peek, a snippet of these classes. And again, this is something that is absolutely free to all of the library branches because of the statewide partnership. Um, so there's two things that, that can happen. One, the very easy thing is um, that URL, Max, uh, has actually, Kathy, you posted it at the 1127 mark, or at least that's what I'm on uh, West Coast time, the get set up .io slash partner slash Michigan is very easy. But the secondary piece is this get set up anywhere. So we're happy. We'd love to talk to you all more about this, um, should you be interested. So um, there is another, someone had asked early on about our data. Um, and just overall, I wanna just let you all know. So we are, we are global. Um, we have about 2 million users in the United States alone. And about four, a little over four and a half million worldwide, primarily those are in India, our Get Set Up India uh, website experience is, is very similar in terms of depth and breadth as, as the U.S. site. However, um, all of our classes, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, we have plenty of users in the U.S. that take classes out of our Australia, from our Australian guides, our guides in India, like Max said, we have classes in Mandarin as well, so... That's worldwide. Um, in terms of other demographics, um, we are primate in the U.S. I won't speak for India, and Ellen and Max can keep me um, honest here. Our uh, demographic skews primarily female, and it's not by design. It's just kind of how we've evolved over time. And for the state of Michigan, we fall around that uh, about that too. It's a little over um, about seventy-five percent of all uh, learners on our site in Michigan are female. And in terms of frequency and seasonality, um, again, we're only three years old. Uh, <laughs> and actually I wanna just say too, we just celebrated our three year anniversary with the state of Michigan. We launched our partnership in October, 2020, uh, 2020, sorry. Um, and so what we've seen over that short time period is that usage generally goes down and especially with COVID 
uh, vaccinations being available, people feeling more comfortable. This started in 2021. Um, as you would expect, as people travel, summertime usage goes down. And October, September, October uh, are when usage generally goes up. So in terms of frequency, I'm assuming that question means how often do people come back to the site? What we found is that it usually takes a learner two to three times to come onto our platform to start taking classes. Once they get, get um, comfortable, they'll either do one of two things. They'll either A, follow a guide that they really love they, they and or a group of uh, like-minded learners um, that they've made friends with in a class. Um, or two, they start off doing one thing and go and explore another. And I'll use my mom as a very quick example. My mom started off using uh, get set up for technology. After my dad passed, she needed to learn how to not have an email account that has his name on it, um, learn how to use her uh, Apple products. She had never had Apple products, so she was very technology focused. And then she quickly turned into um, doing modified uh, fitness classes, chair yoga, meditation, Tai Chi. She's had back surgery and knee surgery and arthritis. So that worked for her. And now she's moved on to staying on to a couple of those classes and then exploring arts. So she takes watercolor series and things like that. And we find that's very, very similar with learners um, across the U.S. and within Michigan in particular. So sorry, that was a long answer. I just wanted to make sure because we don't have often uh, where we're able to talk to so many people at one time. Well, and I was going to follow that up because, Jean, I'm not sure if you were also curious about stats, like if you're thinking you want to add stats to like your state aid report or something, because this is paid for by the Library of Michigan and it is, you know, kind of something that um, uh, seniors are, are doing at home, it's going towards our IMLS reporting and our stats for the, for the entire state. So you wouldn't need to worry about collecting those um, unless you do hold something, some type of like, you know, session at your library um, to introduce your community to get set up. Then you track those stats yourself for yeah. that, if that helps. Yeah. And, and again, I see a lot of questions with regard to, uh, you know, how do we have materials in hand? And what Max has done a very great job with our marketing team, that toolkit has the building blocks of everything you need. However, we know that this is just, you know, the, the tip of the iceberg. So the thing that I would highly recommend for any of you that want a follow-up session, we've done this in the past where we've hosted welcome sessions with senior living community centers, with different branches, um, with different groups like senior volunteer groups. We also, we also do that as well. So we're happy to do a deeper dive to walk through some of these materials with you. But the link to the toolkit, you know, go in and explore their templates. Um, we can certainly kind of look to customize should there be a need. Um, that's something that we can, we can try to work out for you all. Um, in terms of the contract, someone had asked a contract. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons we're hosting this is that the contract extension with the Library of Michigan was signed in September. It's good for one year. It piggybacks off on the uh, on the MDHHS contract. So, you know, we have this time period until September 2024. Um, we know that uh, Heather and team that look at this, we usually start contract discussions um, you know, it'll come sooner rather than later, right, Max? It's probably around springtime that we'll talk about what type of budgets are available. Um, because again, we, as long as the parent contract, the master agreement with Michigan, uh, the state unit on aging is in play, this is something, you know, you, you kind of work off each other. At no point in time do we, do we want this to kind of go away, but just know that that's, that's kind of our timing right now. Yeah, and on behalf of Library of Michigan, like we rely on hearing from you all from our public libraries, you know, that you are using this um, and that it's a great resource from you. So make sure if you are using it, you convey that to us. Um, we do put out a survey um, every year about these resources as well. Um, but yeah, it's the likelihood, um, you know, is, is great if, as long as we're using it. <laughs> And we, we think it's such a great resource uh, for our older community. 
I'd love to see what folks are doing with it. A uh, question about the 2024 um, marketing tools. Will those be at the same link? Will it just be refreshed for 24? Yeah, that's a great question, Mary. So our team is currently developing our 2024 content calendar. Um, so that'll be unveiled here within the the coming months. Uh, that way we do have a fresh clean slate for, for next year. And you'll see that reflected in real time within our existing toolkit. Perfect. So bookmark that toolkit, guys. What other questions? Let's see. So there might be a few folks on the call that are currently using it. And what I would love to hear is how folks are using it. Maybe share how you're marketing it um, and what your community is thinking about it. Is there anyone on here that is willing to share that? You can unmute. Um, you don't have to turn on your camera if you're being camera shy today. <laughs> I'll go first. I'll go first. Great. <laughs> we um, added it to our calendar listings as a service that people could um, access. So, and we have, when we put out our, our events calendar, it's got a number of things on it, all of our current activities, but also information and connections to some other things that may be of interest to our patrons. And so that's where this has, gets set up, has gone to reside. Um, but of course, because it's all, you know, kind of out in the ether, um, you know, that sort of led to my questions about how is it, do we know how it's interact, how people are interacting with it? What's the response like, et cetera, here in Michigan? Um, I have not heard anyone say to me, oh, this is a wonderful program or, you know, gosh, I wish you would, you know, had added that earlier or, or whatever. So, uh, you know, I don't think we have reached out as far in our marketing for it as we could. Um, and that's probably the next step to address. Jean, um... Jean's at the Grand Ledge District Library, um, but I'm wondering when you said you put it, you listed in your calendar, is it your virtual calendar? Do you have a print one? What how e-newsletter? How does that go out? It's out in our uh, on our website event calendar. So okay. it doesn't go into our printed materials. It's not a, hmm, it's, it's a service that you can access through the information that we share, but not a service that's actually physically taking place in the library. Right, right. Well, it looks like these branded flyers and email images might be of use for you in the toolkit. They look really good. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one thing to note too, we, we actually did this, Max will probably remember this with one of our YMCA partners uh, a little time back, De depending on what kind of space you have available, um, you know, what they did was they created a get set up learning lounge with a few of their computers that they had available. And um, they printed out the flyers, they had them kind of there, they did a banner. Um, and, you know, made it kind of like a, a a learning center where people could come in. They had uh, folks, it, it, you know, it was kind of advertised. So it was there uh, in their e-newsletter. -news and again, I think it's just one of those things where, you know, you experiment, obviously everybody has different levels of uh, availability in terms of resources. So that's something that we've seen in the past. It was really fun. We were excited to see that, um, how, how people kind of take the materials and, and use them. Great. Um, Colleen. Hi there. Um, I'm outside of a car dealership right now. We're getting our car service, but um, I just wanted to say that at our library, we um, have a partnership with our county health department that they come every month and they talk about a particular topic. They do a short presentation. So we, um, just to fill out the program, we started highlighting our resources that related to whatever their topic was. 
and we always highlight Get Set Up as a resource for whatever um, information that might pertain to it, like um, healthy eating or um, exercise programs or whatever. Um, but I think it was at one of the library directors' um, monthly meetings that somebody might have mentioned about having um, like a class that you uh, just do as a group. So we would um, like sign up for a get set up class on whatever topic and then everybody who came for the program would attend together. Um, so it wouldn't be like everybody on an individual computer, but everybody as a group watching it like projected on a screen. And I'm excited to, to do that next. And we do have people in our community who are using it and loving it. It's just um, really, really great programming. And I've gone into a few classes and just have been amazed at um, the idea of like at two o'clock in the morning being able to take a class from India. It's just like the most amazing program ever, I think. And that it's free for all Michigan residents is kind of amazing. And I, I saw it in the chat, somebody asked why we were just learning about it now, but it's been promoted. I've seen it in the Michigan List Serve a lot. And I mean, I've, we've known about it for quite a while, so I'm not sure, might've just missed it. Thank so, you, Colleen. Sorry, sorry to ramble, but I'm, I'm thrilled with this program. I'm so I'm glad. So glad to hear that you're having, you're having good use of it. Thanks so much, Colleen. I just wanted to mention, Kathy, I did see Mary's question about the uh, program. So this is just the start of our second year in partnership with the Library of Michigan. So last year we expanded to um, really widen the offering and class seats available, but we have been partnered with MDHHS since 2020, just not the Library of Michigan for that full three years. So still somewhat fresh. The year flew by, so we're looking forward to continuing to spread the word uh, starting this year into 2024. All right. I do think one other quick thing, Kathy, um, in terms of finding out information, uh, in year one, uh, the communication was funneled through one person who's no longer uh, with the Michigan library system. So I do think, you know, one of the things is or if any of you would like to get information directly from us, I think you can probably work with Kathy and Heather uh, to have your name on a list because what Max does is that he sends that out directly to, to a list of contacts that we have that have opted in to receive um, emails from us, um, marketing emails or personal contact emails from us. So we want to obviously honor whatever is in place in terms of the communication flow within the state library system. We don't want to be, a, <laughs> you know, spamming people that don't want to get information. So I think that's really important. If you do want to have that direct contact with us, just let Kathy and, and Heather know, and we can make sure to add you directly too. So there's no, there's nothing that's missed. Yeah, I'm actually going to funnel everybody to Heather. <laughs> but Sorry, um, Kathy. Yeah, probably a good idea. <laughs> that's all right. Um, but I will say this. If you are on Mishlibel or any um, of our Michigan listservs, that's where this information has been going for a couple of years. So um, we are also frequently talking about it at directors meetings. Um, however, we have a lot of folks that may not be directors on today. They're working directly with um, uh, our seniors and, and our adult community. And so you may be just hearing about it for the first time um, if you aren't on our listservs and, and hadn't heard from your director previously, but it has been out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm loving hearing the stories of how people are using it. Um, so uh, thank you, Colleen and Jean, for sharing. Do we have any additional questions or great idea shares um, that folks want to put out there? We do have... Um, I don't, I want to just call everybody's attention in the chat if they aren't paying attention that Karen was asking about help with technology and um, Max shared a really great link um, for the technology class offering. So uh, make sure you, you 
click on that link today um, to, to be led directly to those resources in our chat. So one more question for our group, if um, we don't have others that have been using it and want it to share. Um, those that are here today, did this spark any ideas for potential programming, sharing, um, engagement in your community? I, I'm guessing there's quite a few folks that maybe visit the nursing homes um, in your community. This is a great spot to take some of the flyers. Um, or if you're looking for a subject to speak and address uh, those in assisted living, um, this might be a great topic for that. I always have to give my pause. Let anybody unmute here. Yeah, the, the monthly health meeting is a really great idea. Ellen. Hey. Hi. <laughs> I actually work. I've been keeping silent on the other end, and I am from Rhode Island, and I work for Get Set Up. But um, you piqued my interest when you just mentioned the assisted living and the nursing homes. Um, I used to work in that business. So actually, the activity directors at those assisted livings might really be interested to hear about Get Set Up because sometimes... They don't have anything going on on a Sunday afternoon or they're leaving for the weekend and they feel bad because someone's not going to have any visitors. So they might be the cheerleaders for the Michigan classes in their particular building, if that makes sense. Just thought I'd throw that out there. That's a great idea. And you can definitely pair like these, these uh, resources from the toolkit to help market that, you know, pop some of the flyers into the books that you're bringing to your um, assisted living homes or, um, you know, definitely, I love this idea of reaching out and helping out the staff at, at those facilities, um, and engaging yeah, they them. Might, they might know the folks that don't have anything going on and the ones that probably can handle getting on to get set up by themselves, you know, so anyway. I just had an idea, um, as well, because, uh, Everyone knows that the holidays are coming up and when families gift uh, the loved ones in their in their family a new iPad or a Kindle for the holidays, um, where do those folks go when they get that new gift? Well, they often walk right into the library and say, how do I download a book? <laughs> what do I do with this? Where do I? <laughs> um, and so this is a great time to also be marketing these technology classes at your libraries this time of year. Yeah. And I think, Kathy, one of the things that we can do, Max, um, it's kind of kind of reminding me as we go back to a very, or, because we've had a partnership with Michigan so long, this doesn't always occur to me, kind of like the starter pack of classes, if you will recommendations. Um, that flyer can be very, very specific on the starter classes. Um, but I do want to let you know that that use case is something that we see and we experience. There is a service that our team does provide. It's not part of the current contract, but it is something that just know that our support team does this. And we have uh, contracts in place with uh, a couple of the AAAs, Area Agencies on Aging in California, where we do iPad novice onboarding. So we did, Max and I were at an event in Orange County last month where we distributed, the, the AAA distributed 230 uh, iPads, and it was exactly that case. They came solo, I have pictures of, of people coming with their dogs, their family members, with translators, uh, however they could get there. We help them unbox it. We have a very uh, beginning iPad basics class that we offer that can be part of that starter pack. But I think this is where, in terms of get set up, our, even though we're small, we're mighty, a support team is staffed with very empathetic 
peers that know how to help people do that. So that is a great point in terms of that. Um, The other thing that I will mention very lastly is that Max is working with our content team. The December schedule is actually being finalized. So while you'll get the link to this toolkit, someone had asked a question, well, will it be updated in 2024? It's actually updated every single month. So in the next week or so, we'll have um, all of the December holiday classes. To that end, a lot of older adults are alone um, on the holidays, and we do offer classes that are seasonally themed um, to kind of help address that too. Wonderful, thank you. Well, if there aren't any more questions, Oh, wait, I have one. Oh, yes, Jean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm not actually at work today. I'm also at home. So this is, you know, I'm, I'm following along in my kitchen. Um, is there now the the marketing toolkit is updated constantly. Is that what I just understood? Yes. OK. Um, hmm. Are there ever any email blasts that go out? You know, something about that, that because sometimes those are things that prompt me to like be sure I'm updating, be sure I'm paying attention to to some of these types of things. And did I did I miss something on that? Well, I know Heather will push out messages to the listserv, um, but are you talking about like a specific newsletter to say here's like the highlights, like we do for Web Junction, um, like here are the highlights for this month. Yeah, something like that. So it it refreshes me because that puts it right in front of me that I need to get back in there and refresh the message and change and, and put in the updates. Um, and I know I have seen that. I've seen it come through on the listserv. And so I think that's how I actually got an, engaged with it in the first place. Um, but it sounds like it's really going to be beneficial to go to the next level and, and get more deeply into it. So just always looking for a way to prompt my memory to take some of those actions. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely something um, we'll chat with Heather. I'll convey that to Heather um, and then she can talk with Max and Michelle about um, future ideas. If I, I'm not aware if that's already been done in the newsletter format. I don't think it is. I, I don't remember yeah. it there. So yeah. um, any prompts I get, help me. <laughs> yeah, no, great idea. Great idea. Even if Heather just puts a reminder out every month, we can, we can check on in on that. Exactly. Yeah. And I think too, as Max said, the 2024 content planning, uh, we, what we hear loud and clear is that, uh, you know, our, our, the way that we've been updating things are, it's very dependent upon our guide schedule. So we have to wait until they get their schedule done. Um, now we'll have different themes that'll come out sooner in 2024. And I think this is where that, that get set up anywhere, opportunity to embed, you know, 50 of our curated classes, we can push those seasonal, real exciting new things up to the top. And that's already on your library website. So again, I I just will make one additional kind of plug for that. If any of you are interested in having Max and I talk to you all separately about that with, with Heather, we're more than happy to do that. She's aware of this. We tried to explore it with the e-library. Um, and I think this is just a really great opportunity for the branches in 2024. So we don't want to overload you. There's so much really great information, but just know that that is something that, uh, you know, as a, as a next step, we're absolutely happy to talk with you all about. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much um, to Max and Michelle and Ellen for joining us today um, and for sharing this out. Um, we really appreciate it. And we're looking forward to hearing what uh, you're what you are doing in your libraries and in your community with it. So thank you everyone for being here.